when we become spiritual seekers, one of the first things we do is we start looking for teachers, looking for workshops, classes, groups, cults, <laughs> anything at all to advance us in some way. And guess what? It never works, does it? Because you go to a workshop or you meet a guru and have a teacher and you go to a weekend or you do whatever it is you do, you go to a retreat. And while you are there, you are able to see things a little bit differently. You are able to let things go. The world might open up for you. You might start feeling love in a new way. But then time happens, right? You leave the workshop or you leave the retreat. A couple of weeks go by and then all of a sudden you find yourself back in the same place. You're like, why am I doing that again? Why is this thing over there still bothering me? Like I thought I was done with that. Some people call that the guru effect, which does happen, of course. But there's another thing going on there. And it's not external. It's internal. It's called ego. Well, you give it whatever name you want. It's that part of ourselves that trusts repetition and aims to recreate the past in order to feel safe. Now, there's a reason we have it. it we actually created it ourselves. And it's not a hardwired you know, program, not hardwired in the body. It's just a software glitch that we created when we were infants because we didn't understand you know, the nature of life and holding on to experiences and what it meant what we were feeling and everything else. When you come to my school, I'm going to show you how to unravel your reasons for creating that mechanism. And when you unravel your reasons for creating ego, because you're trying to keep something safe, when you find out that that thing you were trying to keep safe doesn't actually exist, <laughs> there's nothing to be afraid of, ego tends to just sort of fall away, it tends to like do its job in a different way. It can start to watch our back rather than sabotage our life. And that's really exciting. I mean, it's, it's actually really easy to do. It's simply information. And one of the things I've discovered in my studies is that we all make the best possible choice for ourselves based on the information we have. And to make a new excellent choice, it's not about finding out what the choice is and then making it. It's about getting new information. And when you have new information, you know, from which to pool uh, your options, you know, then you make the best possible choice. And when you get new information, you upgrade your best possible choice. We do this constantly. At my school, the YBNL College, what we do is give you information. And that information isn't, you know, lecture hall. It's not me telling you what I think the truths are. The information is actually exercises. And when you do the exercises, when you make the new choices, and when you try things in a new way, that gives you knowledge. It gives you corporal knowledge. You feel it in your body, kind of like when you learn to ride a bike. So many spiritual schools, they're kind of like uh, you know, a teacher telling you how to ride a bike. And if you think about it and you start listening to what they say, you start thinking, oh, yeah, I can ride a bike. <laughs> but then when you go get on the bike, you fall over, right? At my school, we actually put you on the bike and show you how to balance it so that you can ride on your own and so that you don't need me. I am a student or a devotee of Harakon Babaji. I've been following him around for more than 20 years. He's appeared to me, he appears to me in all kinds of like wild ways all the time, but physically materializing and appearing for me to give me guidance and to help me when I've had serious, serious issues. And he's also appeared to drag me on this path to unravel this knot, this big puzzle we've all been in forever, and to then show you how to do it because I have unraveled it. And I can tell you, it isn't just about finding a portable paradise. <laughs> it isn't just about being able to observe everything and feel the unconditional love all the time although that happens. This work, when you go through the college, the first semester, it's all about healing. It's about unraveling the mechanism of ego that keeps us repeating the same mistakes over and over. It's about unraveling you know, the triggers. It's about unraveling the upsets and just about learning how to let that stuff go. And, all, and, you know, and we learn to let it go by learning why we're holding on. When you find out why you're holding on, it's so easy to let go. That's first semester. Second semester, 
now that our perceptions have opened up, we can start perceiving energy better. The second semester, I teach you how to move energy, both within and without. And by energy, I mean anything. So it could be emotional energy, I teach you how to shift fear into love, for example. Um, but money is also energy. You know, money is energy, time is energy, everything is energy. Your hand is energy. <laughs> it's all energy. Learning how to move energy is critical to being able to successfully navigate life. And that's really a big problem most of us have had is that while our egos are always measuring and comparing and judging and trying to figure out what's good and bad or wanted and not wanted, well, while our mind is busy trying to figure all that stuff out, we're missing out on what's the deeper information, what's going on below that, the energy that's moving below that. And when you can start perceiving that energy, then you can start manipulating it. You can start shifting it, making it do better things for you <laughs> and for other people. Third level of the college is about manifestation. So, you know, this, just leave it at that. The schooling, this training that we do at the YBNL College mushrooms up. And you get to start by finding your portable paradise. And, you know, you don't need to create it. There's nothing to like reach outside of yourself to pull in to create a portable paradise. The paradise is already within you. It's at your core. It's just that, you know, all the upsets, traumas, sufferings, stresses, things, you know, that we haven't resolved in life, those memories tend to pile on top of our paradise until we can't feel it anymore. We don't see the paradise anymore. And all we see is the stresses and, and the hard times. Now, I've been through a lot of my life, like, you know, can't be here to pretend that I've got a great life. I've been through physical and sexual abuse when I was very young. Um, I've been homeless, I've been really sick. Um, I've had like just breakups, <laughs> relationships fall apart out of nowhere, apparently. I've been fired from, you know, multiple jobs. My life has not gone great, but that's why I pursued this. And that's why I, you know, really invested my life in looking to figure this out. The YBNL College, it's about finding the portable paradise and it's about increasing our personal power in terms of being knowing what's going on around us, but also that in terms of creating what's happening around us. So really what we're doing here at the college is creating warriors, spiritual warriors. And you know, spiritual warrior does not mean you get to carry a sword downtown and, and slay people's demons or whatever. <laughs> a spiritual warrior means you know how to maintain a sense of unconditional love and acceptance in the face of crazy. Because when crazy appears, it tries to perpetuate itself and it tries to make others crazy too, right? It's like a virus. It wants to just expand out. Spiritual warrior, someone who can stand still and hold their ground in the face of crazy. And when we do that, crazy goes away. Crazy transforms. <laughs> and that's really valuable work because, you know, let's face it, there's a lot of crazy in the world right now. And when we can learn to stand up and diminish or get rid of the crazy, you know, we really help the world out a lot. So there is a, a benefit here to the world of doing the training. This training, it's not just for us, although definitely in the first semester, it feels really good to be, you know, complete with the suffering and the stress. You know, and after that, learning personal power and what I teach you, you can certainly use personally for yourself, as long as you're doing it for win-win. But this bigger win-win picture, it's about making the world a better place. You know, start with yourself. Once yourself is in a good place, then you can start to dissipate some of that crazy energy in our environment. Because you know what? People that aren't trained... And I've seen it, you know, and maybe it's happy. You maybe you know exactly what I'm talking about. You'd be feeling great. You're walking down the sidewalk, and then all of a sudden, you just feel a fog and a funk, and you start getting mad. You don't know why. Well, that's because there actually are balls of negative energy in the world. And, you know, when we run into them, they mess with us. <laughs> but when you can be in your core, when you can fall into your center and observe the world as it is, 
not only can you perceive those things, you can also dissipate them and you can shift them. Hmm? And you can really learn to help the world out in a really good way. Because it's, you know, this isn't about walking around saying, blessed be to everybody. This is about when you feel energy that is incongruent with, you know, happiness, that you latch onto it and you're able to change the wave of it so that it feels better. Now, this is real warrior training. We're talking about shifting the shape of wavelengths with our intentions. And doing that, if you have any idea what I'm talking about, then you should definitely join the college. If you sign up for the newsletter, you can get in the college for free right now and see what's going on. If you've already done some spiritual training, let me know and I can get you to the place that you should be at in the college because the college, it's really set up for brand new, never had any spiritual training before freshmen. So as a freshman, if you've got no idea what I'm talking about, about weird energies in the world or whatever, you know, don't even worry about it. It's considered a metaphor, <laughs> doesn't matter. Would you like to do spiritual training for personal healing? That's a really good thing. It helps the world a lot and you know, your world will shift. It will change for the better when you change your internal world. The world outside of you also shifts. That's a fantastic thing to do. When you're ready to take it to the next level, you come to second semester. I'll see you there and I'll teach you how to start moving energy and shifting energy. And well, we can really have a lot of fun. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm not a saint. You know, I was taught by Harakam Babaji. I followed him around for 20 some years as he took me to different teachers and different experiences and, you know, everything from amazing experiences with some amazing saints like Guru Maya to, you know, crazy, scary, hanging out with gangsters, not sure if I'm going to survive the night kind of crazy stuff, which I also learned from. I... I'm not trying to be a saint. I don't want to be a guru. I'm just being myself. And, you know, to that end, that's also what I'm offering you as a student is that you do not need, I mean, you're allowed to, of course, but you do not need to shift your life to become something that you don't want to be just to do the spiritual training. You know, spiritual training, it evolves us. And that evolution is organic. And I do not push myself beyond where I feel comfortable. So, I drink a lot of coffee, I smoke weed, I curse, I listen to rap music, and I also listen to bhajans. But, you know, life ebbs and flows. It's okay to go back and forth. And, you know, that's really one of the joys of a real spiritual teacher. And it's something I learned from Babaji is that, you know, the spiritual life, it's not always easy. <laughs> you know, we, yeah, we're spiritual beings, but we're also physical beings. We also have this physical body. And you know what? When you're in spiritual training and you just need to get away and go do something else for a while, you go do it, you know, and you handle yourself, you get rid of whatever you need to take care of, and then you come back to the training. And that's how it is with me. You know, there's times when I just want to listen to Cypress Hill. <laughs> and, you know, whatever. It is what it is. It makes me comfortable in some ways because of my history and because of like kind of some of the stuff I've been through, you know, and does that disqualify me from being a spiritual teacher? No, you know, and being a teacher, it's a lot different than being a guru. In fact, I tell my students, you know, you should really perceive me as just another student at the college because that's what I am. I'm a student who went through the training before you. So think of me as like an upperclassman who can help you with your studies because, you know, I can't teach you directly. Babaji showed me stuff. He gave me experiences to teach me things. And now I'm giving you those experiences so that you can teach yourself those things and what that looks like and how to get through it. I'm totally happy to help you because I've already done it. Don't put me on the pedestal of a guru or a big spiritual teacher or whatever. I'm really an upperclassman. I've got some skills. I'd love to teach you those skills, but you're really only going to find those skills if you let me be a student with you. If you put me on a pedestal, those skills are going to feel out of reach. And 
that's really the joy of me finding Babaji because, yeah, he's, you know, you can find videos of him and he's sitting on the pedestal and he's blissed out and whatever else. But that is just one slice of who he is. He can also be your best friend and he can show up in so many different ways. Um, you know, he's not attached to the pedestal and neither should you. If you attach anybody to a pedestal, including him, it, it just puts them out of reach. And this portable paradise that you're looking for, right? You'd like it to be within reach. Don't put it on a pedestal either. The portable paradise, it's who you really are at your core. And all the stresses and suffering and traumas and nonsense and like false beliefs, all the stuff that's been piled on top of who you really are, like that can just go away. What appears and disappears isn't real. You know, stress can show up stresses us out and then it goes away it's, and you know what that cycle of stuff appearing you know and impacting us and then going away that happens whether you interact with that thing or not and when stuff shows up right to stress us out if we can fall into our portable paradise and just let it play out and then go away it's a lot easier Mm -hmm. because all that drama, all the interacting with the stress and like trying to fix it or make it go away doesn't do anything. All it does is create drama and stress. This is a new way of doing things perhaps, a new way of seeing things. Maybe you haven't heard this perspective before. You come to the college and start unraveling why your body puts traumas and stresses on top of your portable paradise on top of you know the reflective heart at your core, <laughs> all that dust that's piled upon that, that prevents the reflection of the divine light, all of that stuff. There's a reason why it's there, and the reason why it's there is something you did. But that's really good news. It means you don't need permission from someone else, and you don't need to ask someone else to take it away. You can do it yourself when you understand how you did it. You, you got this. Come to the college. I'd love to show you. And if for whatever reason you can't come to the college, you can also see my videos on YouTube. Just go to my other channel, Free of Limits, and you, know, you can do a workshop and start peeling these layers out. And what we do at the college is we go after the underlying reason for why our bodies hold on to stress and trauma. Because our bodies don't have to. We can be here now and enjoy life regardless of our history. And that's what's really amazing. And the sirens prove it. Regardless of what spiritual training you are doing, if you've gotten stuck in some way and need help, you can come to the college and ask me for assistance. I've literally spent 30 years on this. I've been to all kinds of modalities. I've been through a few cults and all kinds of different things. I've met a bunch of saints, met some pretty evil people too. I got a pretty good idea of what's going on. I also have a pretty good idea of how energy gets stuck and how we get stuck. And also, ah, how to let that go. Come to the college. If you sign up to the, for the newsletter, you can come into the college for free. And then just chat with me. Send me a chat message and see if I can help you out. I'd love to. And if I can't, hey, no skin off your back, no skin off my back. And if I do have the right answer, though, you know, you might find that priceless piece that you've been looking for. And, you know, once in a while, I feel like I've got it and I'd love to share it. And other times I'm not so sure, but, you know, that's just the nature of having doubts. Spiritual life. You know, when we're talking about things we can't see or touch, <laughs> it can be a little fun, but it's also, you know, we really need to be holding hands when we look at these things. So when you need help, even if it's not me, find help somewhere. Come to my college if you can. I'd love to meet you. If you saw this far, I probably have something for you.